Right, here we are. It's Friday again. And uh, I think it's drizzling outside. There's no surprise. And <coughs> we're a few people short tonight. I did see... <coughs> excuse me. I did see in the paper that it's uh, Rill and Prestatin District Swingers and Doggers annual get-together this week. And it may be just a coincidence, but Alan's not here. Uh, the Jenkins aren't here, and the Pritchards aren't here. <laughs> uh, it's just coincidence, I'm sure. Um, that's just how it works out. Anyway, we're going to kick off tonight. It's not me, it's Mr. Michael, to know him is to love him, Hawkins. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, good evening. This uh, first song is called Leaving on a Jet Plane, uh, John Denver's little uh, gem. Um, I think you've all heard it before. You'd be amazed if you haven't. Leaving on a Jet Plane. Oh, my bags are packed, I'm ready to go I'm standing here outside your door Hate to wake you up to say goodbye The door is breaking, it's early morn The taxi's waiting, he's blowing his horn Already I'm so lonesome I could die so kiss me and smile for me Tell me that you wait for me Hold me like you'll never let me go I'm leaving on a jet plane Don't know when I'll be back again Oh babe, I hate to go There's so many times I've let you down So many times I've played around I tell you now they don't mean a thing Every place I go I think of you Every song I sing I'll sing to you when I come back I'll wear your wedding ring So kiss me and smile for me Tell me that you wait for me Hold me like you'll never let me go I'm leaving on a jet plane Don't know when I'll be back again Oh, babe, I hate to go Well, now the time has come to leave you One more time, let me kiss you Close your eyes, I'll be on my way I'll dream about the days to come when I won't have to leave alone About the time I won't have to say Oh, kiss me and smile for me Tell me that you'll wait for me Hold me like you'll never let me go I'm leaving on a jet plane don't know when I'll be back again Oh babe, I hate to go I'm leaving on a jet plane Don't know when I'll be back again Oh babe, I hate to go
Thanks as always, Michael. <clears throat> that was totally different to the way I've been practicing it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, I couldn't get back to the rhythm I'm, I've been singing to that. Um, still, don't mind. <laughs> it's nice not to get stick for doing a John Denver song, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Make a change, yeah. Yeah, from <laughs> those who we know are won't to give you stick. What are you eating, Frank? I won't say anything about John Denver. <laughs> yeah, this is uh... oh, no, Anne, you, you're not muted, Anne. We can't hear you. We can just hear Frank slurping his pudding down. No. No, we can't hear you. Never mind. Right, what are you doing for us next then, Mike? This second one is called uh, The Last Trip Home. It's about the... Um the demise of the big power horses on the on the farms um, and it's a story of the of, of, a, of a farmer and the the last trip they took back with the with the horses from the fields the last day's work they did before they made them into glue that's right yeah before they boiled them down oh. <laughs> yeah <clears throat> I have worked on farms and from the start The muckle horses won my heart With big broad backs they proudly stand The uncrowned kings of all the land And yet for all their power and strength They're gentle as a summer wind Steady boys, walk on, your work is nearly done. No more to till and plough the fields, the horse's day is gone. And this will be our last trip home, so steady boys, walk on. Now you'll hear men sing their songs of praise Of Arab stallions in a race Of hunters that fly with the hounds To chase the fox and run him down But none of them compare our vow To a working pair that pulls a plough Steady boys walk on, your work is nearly done. No more to till and plough the fields, the horse's day is gone. And this will be our last trip home, so steady boys walk on. O'er all the years I plied me trade, And all the fields I ploughed and laid, I never thought I'd see the time When a Clydesdale's work would ever end, But progress runs its driven course, And tractors have replaced the horse. Steady boys, walk on, your work is nearly done. No more to till and plough the fields, the horse's day is gone. And this will be our last trip home, so steady boys, walk on. As we head back, our friends have lined the road to see us one last time. They couldn't bear that they might miss the chance to see us home like this. They'll say they saw in years to come the muckle horse's last trip home. Steady boys, walk on, 
Your work is nearly done. No more to till and plough the fields. The horse's day is gone. And this will be our last trip home. So steady, boy, walk on. Your work is nearly done. No more to till and plough the fields. The horse's day is gone. And this will be your last trip home. So steady, boy, walk on. Oh, love that one. Love that Thank one. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who was the woman who did the dog training years back on the telly? She used to say, walk Margaret. on. <laughs> Barbara. Barbara Woodhouse. That was her, yeah. Uh, yeah. Walk on. Yeah. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> right. Oh, we've got... we've got. You're going to have to unmute yourself, Stuart, because we want to hear you. Hear you. We don't want to hear Ed, no? No, she was sacked last week as a page turner. <laughs> she, she was pretty, as page turners go, she was pretty crap. You know, if that's all you got to do is turn your page over. I'll disappear, I think. She's going to do a runner now. In case she makes me laugh. <laughs> He'll start laughing otherwise, so I'm going to move. <laughs> We're going to do a bit of a, a what's his name, Robert Zim Zimmerman or something. <laughs> Bob Bob Dylan Bob, or something? Uh, Bob Bob Cratchit. Yeah, that Cratchit. Was him. That's the guy. Yeah. So I'm gonna have a crack at one of those. So here goes nothing. No, 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 it ain't me, babe It ain't me, you're 
for your life and nothing more, but it ain't me, babe. No, 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 it ain't me, babe. It ain't me you're looking for, babe. Yes! <laughs> oh, the, there were a lot of people joining in with that there, Stuart. <laughs> A lot of people joining in there. So, uh, the there must be. The page turner has done a runner, so it's a DIY job. Yeah. <coughs> now, the spittoon's somewhere else as well. I don't know where that's gone. <laughs> Can't you just. That's what her lap's for, isn't it? <laughs> This one's a bit of Paul Simon. I hear the drizzle of the rain Like a memory it falls Soft and warm continuing Tapping on my roof and wall Shelter of my mind through the window of my eye. I gaze beyond the rain drenched streams to England where my heart lies. My mind's distracted and confused. song I can't believe It's a tale and strange to rhyme And so you see I have come to doubt What it was I held as true I stand alone without belief Song. Yes, there you see, you don't need your page turner. No, no, no. You know it's she's sacked, that's it, she's binned off. <laughs> <laughs> Did it sound all right? Yeah, yeah, sounds great, sounds great. Um, yeah, we'll expect more next week, so just keep, uh, keep them coming. Okay, keep I'll keep coming. I'll, that yeah. was, I think that was the first song I ever sang in public. Right. It was up at the... Uh, Leeds University Mountain Hut in the Duddon Valley. And I think everybody had been in the pub all night. And I've got to say, I think it was a fairly low standard uh, what was turned out that night. But uh, yeah, good memories, good memories. We got, uh, we got snowed in that weekend. <laughs> and it, we were sort of final year and everybody had to be back on the Monday because being students, you'd have what they call the your final five patients, uh, which are people that you'd done up to a high sort of standard, supposedly. And being students, you know, you left it till the last minute, and I think you got till eleven o'clock on Monday morning. So everybody 
still had patience to get signed off. And at, uh, at lunchtime on Sunday, we were just absolutely still snowed in. And then the snowplow came about four o'clock in the afternoon and we all escaped. And lived <laughs> happily ever after. <laughs> well, well, that was interesting, John, wasn't it? Yeah, get on with it. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, we've got Ian from Kent again. Can you unmute yourself, Ian? Yeah. Hi, John. You've come back for another dose. Yeah, I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> right, we enjoyed you. Right, I'll just run through uh, the list again. Uh, so, we've got Davith and B coming up next. Uh, John W. And then Leslie's going to give us a fiddle tune. So, if I can put you in after my missus on a fiddle, Ian. And then Gaffer, Nick, Gwyn, and me. And, uh, oh, yeah, we've got a, got a good few on tonight, haven't we? Okay, so it's down to Davith. You, you, are you foregoing the proms for us tonight, Davith, again? Well, um, in a sense, yes, but they have been rather depressing, really being presented to a totally empty Albert Hall and um, you know the presentations uh, sort of showed that all the artists were rather feeling rather down. Oh well it must have saved you some cash. It saved um, quite a lot especially since my bus pass doesn't work in London. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't know that. That was uh, worthwhile knowing. Not that, not that I've got one, because no mm. point me having a bus pass up here, because we've got no buses. <laughs> I'd, I'd have to drive into Abergelly or Denby to get a bus. So I've got a 20-minute drive to get a bus, so it's oh. Um, oh. not really worth bothering. <laughs> yeah. Right, we'll let you carry on, David. I won't interrupt you anymore. Okay. Um... The order is B and Davis there tonight. Oh, okay. um, B is reading a poem by, um, I don't know, um, who wrote it, B? B. Yeah, a poem by B. Okay. Do I go? Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, the poem's called Poppy. It fluttered from the pages of the book, a pressed flower, a tissue-thin poppy with petals like dried blood. The poems were your first gift to her, and the poppy slipped between the leaves, a token of kisses in cornfields, of love that couldn't wither or fade. All these years, the flower lay shrouded in verse, preserved, brittle, and transparent, an emblem of all that has gone. As it lies in the palm of her hand, she feels your lips brush the back of her neck. You are with her now and always. Death cannot take you from the life they shared. She will find a poem for the poppy and let it lie among words that live and breathe. God, that was lovely. You're going to have to follow that, David. I am. And um, it's not even with poetry. I'm afraid this is um, prose. This is um, a novel. Um, published in the 60s by uh, Caradoc Pritchard. It's an autobiographical novel um, about Bethesda and growing up with a mother who was getting gradually more and more depressed and finally having to take her to um, the hospital in Denby. But this is from the very last bit of the novel and doesn't have much to do with that part of the story. Um, this is about a time when he's um, 
I got out for a walk with a girl called Ginny Vach Penkai, or Little Ginny uh, from Penkai, and um, she was uh, quite often brought into the headmaster's study by the headmaster, and nobody really knew quite why. And she was quite a well-developed young girl. I will, um, this copy is in Welsh and in English, and I'm going to read the Welsh first, and uh, I'm going to change the very last line I read to what I understand reliably is what the author actually wrote. So, here we go. They're by a river and they're wondering how they're going to cross the river. Sit, but you need to receive our bone. Plum by men, sure, I'm not real. I've got a hurt in crying. I know me. The name Dan and Sean Yawn. But I've never been quilt me on on bost. But Bruin and it is yet me. I can duck even if I ask when and the noise lemon. Yeah, sure, Yawn, my life. A good oil hour at time. A right. A dwell on a smooth arrow in Abbey. Yeah, sure, Yawn, my life with Din and Slobach. Yeah, sure, yeah. And no, it's the lemon. The Mavina and Gabal and the he. I throw here a rust at the heaven and a crack of sunny he. Or in that, I will win what he meant I go. A he sent for the break here and then I, a guaskin din. A caroling you would have seen here. And he got so Gabal, the Hermusio the other day. On. Oedd i bocha cochion hi'n boeth fel tân. Ew, ddosyn ni wedi colli'n wynt chi'n cyrraedd hynna'r ffordd. I dop rall wen, yna hi, a nina gorfaedd efo ond pena wrth y myl yn gilydd. Pa bryd ag ydy fadal o'r ysgol? Ddoi, pan ddim yn ysgol dorri. Mae nhw isio i ni fynd i weithio i chwarael ar fina I shall mean the worst farm, living dear more. Well, Panna is a teen wasp bark, it is in the day. When we shall wasp bark, no? Then we are. But then we are. But then we are. He was sending help out the monkey lace boat, no, so it did. Basser. I could worry about my old loot. Basser. Or made a grass, I don't know, sir. Here. Ar ôl tynnu amdana. Ia. Yn noeth o lymun. Ia. Ach dyn tynnu amdana i. Ar fi'n am tynnu amdana chtha. Ia. Fel hyn. A fel hyn. A fel hyn. Dyn ar ffwb o'r agus i am i oed. Now, I'm not going to translate that last Welsh line literally when I read the English. <laughs> I'm going to read the one that uh, is in the, the book. <laughs> can you swim? She said eventually. Of course I can. I could swim when I was ten. My cousin Gitto taught me how to swim in Swirling Lake at Bull Farm ages ago. Dead. He was a strong lad, Gitto. How would we get across the river? Dive in, of course, and swim. And get soaked to the skin? We'll take our clothes off, of course. Uh, nobody will see us from Post Lane. The rushes will hide us. And run up, raft when? Stark naked? Yes, of course, she said. And leaned down to me. And put her soft hands in my face. Yes, so. She said very slowly, yes, of course, stark naked. And I took hold of her and turned her onto her back and started kissing her like someone had gone mad. She put her arms around me and squeezed me tight. And after we'd been like that for a long time, she let go of me 
and started pushing me off her. But her rosy cheeks were red like fire. Down. I'd have been out of breath before I got halfway to the top of that when she said. And we lay there with our heads close together. When did you leave school? Yesterday, when school broke up. They want me to go to work in the quarry, and I want to be a farm boy, or else go to sea. Why don't you be a farm boy at Black Lake Farm? They want a farm boy there. Oh, yes. Do they really? Yes, really. We could be together every night there. That's right. And come here all the time. That's right. And race across the river. That's right. After taking our clothes off. Yes. Stark naked. Yes. You undressing me and me undressing you. Yes, like this, and like this, and like this. She was the only girl I ever heard. <laughs> Thank that you. was that was bordering on pornography there. Uh, yeah, it's not far <laughs> off, was it? <laughs> uh, a bit Betjeman-esque. Oh dear, I mean, I'm not trying to upstage uh, <laughs> Wynne at all. <laughs> right, so uh, who have we got now? We've got, uh, oh, we've got uh, Mr. Warburton. Oh, there he is with his guitar and he's on his phone tonight because he's lent his computer to somebody. So all your passwords will be gone, John. Your bank account will be emptied. You're going to have to unmute yourself because we can't hear you. That's a good idea, isn't it? I'm, I'm <laughs> very good at doing that. And uh, yes, yes, I've. Uh, I was, as I was saying, it's not the computer with my banking on. That one's uh, the big one. This is just my laptop, which is mainly reserved for zooming. So. Okay, sorry about that. Seems good to me. This is a song in praise of the place I'm going to. The, uh, the district of Penwith in uh, the far west of Cornwall. And this is called Trencrom. Trencrom is a hill between Leland and St. Ives and uh, you can see both the north and the south coast and all around. If you climb up the hill and you look to the north through the shadow of a standing stone you can see the sight of God light bringing the fishermen home if you look to the south, the St. Michael's Mount, home of a dragon I've heard. And out to the west is the town I love best, Penzance that I'd like to call home. This is the land of old kings where stones stand alone or in rings where tales 
were told of the pirates bold and the strong men who once dug for tin. There's not much work here today though No use for the tin or for clay Where once men strive to keep their families alive Tourists now come and play but there's still a pride in old Cornwall There's a land of the land, sea and sun And there's no better place in all of God's earth To be when the day is done I take it that that was one what you writ. I had writ that down in Cornwall for, for me friends from the uh, Penzance Folk Club, and uh, it's been picked. It's played, so I'm told, uh, all around the Penwith area in folk clubs now by various people. But uh, you're not getting any money for it. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> and uh, there's a. It's even being played on one of those big squeeze box thing with keys on it that makes such a row. Oh. You know, Alan Reese jones plays it occasionally. Oh, yeah. Blast your eardrums out. So, yeah, <laughs> there's even a version for one of those. So there we go. Ah, now, what else can we do? Um, song that was written down there. Here we are. I'll give you a Donovan song for a change. Um... <laughs> You missed out last week because Stuart did uh, Donovan last week. All right. Okay, this is uh, one of his only songs with a chorus. So you can all join in as long as you're muted. We stood in the windy city the gypsy boy and I We slept on the breeze in the midnight With the rain dropping tears in our eyes Chorus, and who's going to be the one To say it was no good what we done Dare a man to say I'm too young For I'm going to try for the sun We sang and crept the skies with our laughter Our breath turned to mist in the cold Our years put together counted thirty but our eyes told the dawn that we were old And who's going to be the one To say it was no good what we done I dare a man to say I'm too young For I'm going to try for the sun Huddled in the derelict buildings And when he thought I was asleep He'd lay his poor coat around my shoulders And shiver there beside me in a heap And who's going to be the one To say it was no good I dare a man to say I'm too young For I'm going to try for the sun Me 
mirror, mirror hanging in the sky Won't you look down what's happening here below I stand here singing to the flowers So very few people really know And who's going to be the one To say it was no good what we done I dare a man to say I'm too young We stood in the windy city A gypsy boy and I We slept on the breeze in the midnight With the rain rocking tears in our eyes And who's going to be the one To say it was no good I dare a man to say I'm too young For I'm going to try for the sun Very nice, always enjoy that, always enjoy that Yes right, we, we seem to have been joined by people who are not meant to be here I can see Jan Jenkins' smiling face there, but just the still. And we have Mr. Pritchard. And I should perhaps explain to these two people that at the beginning of the night, I did say that um, I'd seen in the paper that Willem Prestatin and District uh, doggers and swingers were having their annual week away. And it, I did insist that it was purely coincidence that the Pritchards and the Jenkins and the Reese Joneses would be away this week. <laughs> you cheeky little bugger. Um, uh, yeah, uh, oh, greetings from Cricket. Cricket, it's a, what, what's behind you? Behind uh, you. A, a Roman blind. Oh, oh, it's just the angle of it, is it? It's, it's, uh... Yes, it's the, it's the angle of dangle. <laughs> Gwyn, I've caught fish today. <laughs> Three fish. I put them all back. Oh. I'll catch more tomorrow. You may not. Hey. Eh? You may. Oh, we've got Auntie Anne there. We can see her now. We've got everything she's got. She's got sound. We've got video. <laughs> They've finished the puddings. What more could you ask for? Right. Um, okay, we're, I'm going to have to alter this microphone now because Les is going to do a fiddle piece for us. So uh, if you'll just bear with us for a few seconds. Oh, mind your head, John. <laughs> um, uh, Chaz and Jan are on the um, dogging weekend. Uh, are you muted? Are you muted? Yeah, I think. <laughs> Charles and Jan are on the M5. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, I'm not muted. For pity's sake, just Doggy. leave me with this a minute. Oh, for God's sake. How do we get to mute? Oh, mute him, John. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's it, he's done. Right, this, um, this tune's um, called Ailsa Ann Anderson. Uh, and I got it from a CD of Black Eyed Biddy um, called Peace, Enjoyment, Love and Pleasure. And if you haven't got that CD, uh, it's well worth listening to. It's really good. Anyway, uh, in fact, in fact, I think that I think John has about three or four songs off it. You know. Right. So here goes. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
That's a lovely tune. I think you could perhaps spot about halfway through when I got slightly less nervous. <laughs> oh, well, that'll shut Keith Price up for a little bit. He keeps giving me grief every Saturday morning. He phones me up and he says, why is your missus not playing a fiddle? So there we go. Right, uh, who else have we not spoke? Oh, Carl, Carl's here. So Hi, on, the, on the news, it's not looking good for the choirs at the minute. No, it's getting worse, isn't it, really, if, if anything? Um, Welsh Government have not come up with anything, really, yet for choirs, so and I can't see that in the foreseeable future. They've come so, up with bugger all for folk clubs as well. <laughs> well, I think uh, you'd be surprised how much spit comes out. If we, you know, I think it's seen under lights, really. You notice how much spit comes out of p people when they're singing, so it's going to be unlikely. Um, but we ha I think the committee had been down to the hall to just to look at social distancing and things like that and how many that may be allowed in. But apart from that, it doesn't look good at all, does it? So um, you do feel sorry for professional musicians, don't you, at these times, as well as everybody else. I mean, I, I have got the proms on, actually, David, here. It's the East. <laughs> um, I've got it in the background. It's a, it's a lovely concert tonight. I've got it on mute and I'm recording it. But you do feel sorry. The Albert Hall is totally empty. Um, it's a shame. Right. OK. Uh, oh, we've got all the way from Kent. We've got Ian with us again this week. Lovely to see you again, Ian. Thank you, John. Glad, glad you've come back for the second dose. Oh, well, you, you said not many did, so I thought I'd be the exception. <laughs> been looking in churches and looking in bars Thought that I saw you in the oncoming cars It was your reflection cast off by the light Into the sky of this dark city night Where in the world are you now? And I looked for you up in the tallest of trees Swayed back and forth in the mid-autumn breeze When the leaves had reddened And they left you I knew then That it wasn't you Where in the world For you then In music and song As I thought that's where You could be from They were only notes Pulled from the air Not the kind I could read Or breathe Oh, 
Yes. It is so good to hear songs you've never heard before. Uh, and beautifully done as well, eh? Right, what else have you got for us? Cold aeroplanes, slow boats, warm trains Remind me of Jack Hotels and pretty girls will cheer the misty mood I'm in. Silly, sad, I've never had to write this before. Oh, Jacqueline. How long nights allow Thoughts of Jacqueline When phantoms tread around my bed To offer restless dreams they bring It's just the time and place I pies the tree cold boots that leak. Call me to Jack. Lovely, Ian. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you ever so much. And uh, are you off early or will we hear you again in the second half? Um, I, I, we can't do too much after half nine, so I, probably not. But I'll, I'll hang around listening till then. Right. Thank okay. You. We'll see how we we'll see how we're getting on for time. But uh, be nice to hear you again. Right. Uh, oh, we've got uh, we've got Moto G8 Powerlight that looks a little bit like the Stokies to me. <laughs> You're in witness protection as well, are you? No, not speaking. Right. Someone who will be speaking is Gaffer, if he unmutes himself. There we go. Well, I'll, just, I'll change what I'm doing tonight because of that there, John Warburton. Not that he sung any song that I was going to sing, but he sung his lovely song about Cornwall. He'd been and gone and made me homesick. <laughs> All right, we've lost you. <laughs> and then there's Mike. He's singing the song about a fellow who's getting rid of his horse. And the songs of has got a fellow in it who's getting rid of a horse. So I couldn't leave it out. So I'm going to have to leave it in. It starts with something you may have heard. You may have heard from Ireland. You may have heard from Cornwall. The next verse you probably only ever heard in Cornwall. And if you're lucky, you haven't heard the rest of the verses at all. Though some say that the devil's dead and he's buried in Foy Harbor. Some to say that he's rose again, apprentice to a barber. 
Faddle diddle day, faddle diddle day, faddle diddle day in the fields all day. Faddle diddle day, faddle diddle day, faddle diddle day till the cows come home. Now when John's father died, John and I has took a ride down beside the waterside and home again for supper. Faddle diddle day, faddle diddle day. Faddle little day in the fields all day. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day till the cows come home. The mare of blue, he got the flu. You should have heard him wheezing. His wife stuffed parsnips up his nose to stop the bugger sneezing. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day in the fields all day. Faddle little day, faddle little day. Faddle little day till the cows come home. Now Billy Powers, he sat for hours waiting for the ferry. He didn't know twere due to go till the end of February. Oh, faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day in the fields all day. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day till the cows come home. Now Jan Tresize, he sold his wife because she caused him bother. With the money he did make, he bought himself another. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day in the fields all day. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day till the cows come home. Now Adam Clay gave his away because he couldn't sell her and then he took her back cause he felt sorry for the fella now faddle little day faddle little day faddle little day in the fields all day faddle little day faddle little day faddle little day till the cows come home now jasper ware he took his mare along to liscard market he swapped the horse for a pony cause twas easier to park it. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day in the fields all day. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day till the cows come home. Now Artie swings, he feeds his pigs on bacon rind and trifle. The old fool raved, the planet saved, the bacon rinds recycled. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day in the fields all day. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day till the cows come home. Now Peter Sweet, he loves his sheep so sweetly as he reared them. He knit some woolly overcoats to put on when he sheared them. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day in the fields all day. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day till the cows come home. Now Tom Trothone, he killed his cow because she wasn't calving. There's so much meat. Upon the beast he saved his family starving. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day in the fields all day. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day till the cows come home. Now, Cousin Jane, she took her pain to the doctor for to cure it. He said, my dear, what have we here? And how did you procure it? Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day in the fields all day. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day till the cows come home. Now John Tregay come home one day from market day at Lonson. Who should he find but his own dear wife sat cuddling the parson. Faddle little day, faddle little day, faddle little day in the Feels all day, faddle little lay, faddle little lay, faddle little lay till the cows come home. Now some they to say that the devil's dead, and he's buried in Foy Harbor. And some to say that he rose again, apprentice 
to a barber. There you go. Yes. <coughs> I just, uh, I just yeah, know that when I get up about half past two for my first wee, I'm go <laughs> that's going to be going around my head. <laughs> well, it's, it's a, one of those songs that dates from the days when the trains was ever so small and they didn't have very powerful engines on them. And if an accordion player were getting on a train, there wasn't room on the train for the accordion. <laughs> Unless the accordion were put on the train, there wasn't room for the accordion player. So if there was a dance, they had to have that for the three and reel because they couldn't have the accordion and the accordion player at the same place at the same time. That, that sounds but like a result. It yeah. does. I, I don't think we've got poor Alan listening. I dare say he'll pick it up on eBay or, or wherever it goes or YouTube or whatever they put it <laughs> on. They put it on some in posh home. Uh, <laughs> Now, I don't know whether I should go on one of my, my health songs now. I think perhaps something, something for health would be a good idea. Let's go if you need this. Go on, then. All right, then. It's not dentistry. It's <laughs> otorhinolaryngology. Um, ENT. Yeah. Doctor, oh doctor, pray come to my aid and help me to cure my affliction. I haven't got spots, so it's not chicken pox. But oh doctor, me nostrils keeps itching. Nah. I'm sad to admit that a bad nasal itch is an awkward and hard diagnosis. But I'm happy to say that it's your lucky day. For I'm quite an expert on nose. Doctor, oh doctor, go oh, come to me, aid and help me to cure me affliction. I haven't got spots, so it's not chicken pox, but oh doctor, me nostrils keeps itching. If you scratch it, it bleeds, and in consequence, lead to the point where it gets hemorrhagic. Till you get to the state where you exsanguinate and the consequences can be tragic. Oh, doctor, oh, doctor, pray come to me aid and help me to cure me affliction. I haven't got spots, so it's not chicken pox, but oh, doctor, me nostril keeps itching. I expect that you know that a simple approach is the one that a specialist chooses. So I want you to stuff these two pessaries up like the top gynecologist uses. Oh, doctor, oh, doctor, pray come to me aid and help me to cure my affliction. I haven't got spots, so it's not chicken pox, but oh, doctor, me nostrils keep itching. Now that let him down, so the next thing they found was a balsam for John to inhale. It's a remedy old, but it's one we was told uh, was rarely expected to fail. Oh, doctor, oh, doctor, pray come to my aid and help me to cure my affliction. I haven't got spots, so it ain't chicken pox, but oh, doctor, me nostril keeps itching. Now, if that proves no good, I reckon you should try a bit of this strong embrication. And if that lets you down, said the doc with a frown, then your nose will require amputation. Doctor, oh doctor, pray come to my aid and help me to cure me affliction. I haven't got spots, so it's not chicken pox, but oh doctor, me nostrils keeps itching. I was no good at all, so a surgeon was called, and he cut off poor Jonathan Smeller. The treatment was rough, but still wasn't enough for to cure the unfortunate fellow. Oh, doctor, oh, doctor, oh, come to me, eh, and help me to cure my affliction. I haven't got spots, so it's not chicken pox, but oh, doctor, me nostrils keep itching. Ah. In clinic next day, 
poor John, he did say, oh doctor, it seems that he's spreading. The doctor says, John, if this carries on, then you will require beheading. Doctor, oh doctor, if it comes to me aid and help me to cure me affliction. I haven't got spots, so it's not chicken pox, but old doctor, me nostrils keep itching. Now a doctor I know is a hard-working soul with no time for idle chit-chatter. Could you see your way clear just to lend me your ear on a delicate personal matter? Oh doctor, oh doctor, oh come to me aid and help me to cure my affliction. I haven't got spots, so it's not chicken pox, but oh doctor, me nostrils keep itching. Now, said John, I suppose that the loss of me nose is something I've just got to live with. But it don't ask seem rough when I reach for me snuff because I find I got sod all to snuff with. Doctor, oh doctor, oh come to me, eh? Oh, to help me to cure my affliction. I haven't got spots, so it's not chicken pox. But oh doctor, me nostril keeps itching. And Tigwin is scratching his. Mm. Hold on, said the doc, because I reckon I've got some insight into your condition. I used to take snuff, but I soon gave it up when I realized me nostrils kept itching. Oh, doctor, oh, doctor, oh, come to me, eh, and help me to cure my affliction. I haven't got spots, so it's not chicken pox, but oh, doctor, me nostril keeps itching. Now John, for all that, was a fortunate chap, for beheading is frequently lethal. Now the song it is done, to the moral we come. Tobacco's the root of all evil. There you go. What's that news? Nostrils in the original version. <laughs> oh. Right, I see uh, Dave Heitch has just joined us. Evening, Dave. Uh, we'll give you a few minutes to get uh, get sorted out. So if you could... Good evening. Apologies for late arrival. Yeah, don't worry. Always nice to I'm see you, probably Dave. Probably early departure. I've got an early start tomorrow. But, uh, Gonna miss you all together. Right, if you could come on after me, sure. which is in about uh, another couple of goes. Fine. Okay, dokie. Right, we are moving to uh, Upper Colwyn Bay now. Nick, are you awake? You have to unmute yourself, you peasant. I'm trying to unmute myself. Am I unmuted? You are. Yes. Thank you. Well, good yeah. evening. It's, it's lovely to be here. You'll be belching with all that beer you've been Gaffer, drinking. Uh, that song Gaffer just did was the was the musical equivalent of the complete works of Shakespeare, War and Peace, and the Old and the New Testament all combined. I think. <laughs> this is a uh, an Alfred Noyes poem turned into a song by uh, Phil Oaks. Oh, I like Highway. this one. I like this one. I was thinking of going out for a wee while you were on, but I'll stop for this one. It has the kind of happy ending you like, I think, doesn't it, John? Oh, yeah. When the wind was a torrent of darkness among the gusty trees, the moon was a ghostly galleon tossed upon cloudy seas. The road was a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor. A highwayman came riding, riding, riding. A highwayman came riding, 
walked up to the old inn door Over the cobbles he clattered Clashed in the darkened yard Tapped with his whip on the shutters But all was locked and barred So he whistled a tune to the window Who should be waiting there but best the landlord's daughter, the landlord's black-eyed daughter, plaiting a dark red love knot into her long black hair. One kiss, my bonny sweetheart, I'm after a prize tonight, and I'll be back with the yellow gold before the morning light. But if they press me hotly and harry me through the day, then look for me by moonlight, watch for me by moonlight, I'll come to thee by moonlight, though hell should bar the way. He did not come at dawning, he did not come at noon, and out of a tawny sunset before the rise of the moon, when the road was a gypsy's ribbon, looping the purple moor. A troop of men came marching, King George's men came marching, a red coat troop came marching up to the old inn door. They took the landlord's daughter with many a sniggering jest. They bound a musket beside her with the barrel beneath her breast. Now keep good watch, and they kissed her. She heard the dead man say, Look for me by moonlight, watch for me by moonlight, I'll come to thee by moonlight, though hell should bar her the way. Look for me by moonlight, who feet ringing clear, watch for me by moonlight, were they deaf but they could not hear. Look for me by moonlight, she drew one final breath, then By moonlight, she drew one final breath, and her finger moved in the moonlight. The musket shattered the moonlight, it shattered her breast in the moonlight, and warned him with her death. Off he spurred into the west, he did not know she stood, bound with her black hair flowing down, drenched in her own red blood. No, not till the dawn did he hear it. Then his face grew grey to hear How best the landlord's daughter The landlord's black-eyed daughter Who watched for her love in the moonlight And died in the darkness there Back he spurred like a madman Shouting a curse to the sky With the white road smoking behind him And his rapier brandished high Blood red were his spurs in the golden sun Wine red was his velvet coat As they shot him down on the highway Down like a dog on the highway He lay in his blood on the highway With blood on the lace at his throat Still they say when the night is clear And the wind is in the trees When the moon is a ghostly galleon Tossed upon cloudy seas When the road is a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor The highwayman comes riding, riding, riding The highwayman comes riding Up to the old inn door Oh, very Thank nice you. there, Nicholas. Very nice. And you get lost part way through. <laughs> yeah, well... You did that once before. In fact, you got lost big time once at, uh, down at the club. You got to the same point where the daughter's there with the musket under her boobs and yes. you couldn't go on. And we had to wait a fortnight to find out how it ended. There must be something psychological about the barrel of a musket beneath the boobs, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But, uh, but I didn't have any crib notes is my only defence. This next song is, um, is, is from a time when um, rambling Dick Wrigley fancied himself as a, a um, singing a, a trucking song. 
Um, it's, it's called Camille. What, what uh, sort of song is that? Trucking with oh, the T and right. R. <laughs> and, uh, and it is a love song and it's sort of romantic. Not like you to write stuff like that. I'm not certain it has a happy ending. And I try not to do it with an American draw. Tired, desert, dirty, my feet were getting numb. Been walking since I don't know when. All the trucks from Albuquerque that I'd been trying to thumb, they passed me by, left me eating dust again. The big week that I tried pulled up ahead of me, those air brakes hissed in by me. up inside the driver greeted me she was the prettiest desert flower i ever saw camille camille i met her at the wheel of a big old diesel on the dusty desert road i was hitching with a heavy heart hoping to make a new start Sweet desert flower help me put my blues on hold. Didn't look much like a trucker, too smart for a trucker's wife. A smile of an angel hair like a blackbird's wing. Her daddy had been a trucker, been around truckers all her life. Could make that Kenwood sing. We flew the desert highways and we flew with the desert wind. We kicked up dust for 500 miles or more. I didn't care if she went my way, I did not care where we had been. We laughed and I loved that desert flower to show. Camille. Dusty desert road. I was hitching with a heavy heart, hoping to make a new start. Sweet desert flower, help me put my blues on the road. Six months since I've last seen her, six months since I stood tall, been drifting desert roads from town to town. Like a dust storm in the summer, like a flash flood in the fall. She picks me up and then she puts me down. Truck stop east of Tucson, blood red desert sky. Via con Dios, tail lights in the dust. I knew she had to move on and I knew the reason why. Highway the only love. A big old diesel on a dusty desert road. I was hitching with a heavy heart, hoping to make a new start. Big finish. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, it needs it needs a Texan drawl. It does. <laughs> so uh, I don't suppose anybody's heard anything about Rick and Delora over the last few months, have we? Put your hand up if you have. No, nobody's heard anything. Oh well, because uh, Delora hadn't been that good, so I hope she's okay. Um, right, we've got Gwyn. Don't forget, Gwyn, get close up to the mic. 
and unmute yourself or it doesn't matter where you get. No. There you are, you are unmuted. There we are, good, good. Yes, I will, I will move the mic. Um, people give you songs and give you bits and pieces and a lady called Anne Robbins, now you may remember Robbins' fruit and veg shop. It backed onto Queen's Market and uh, she used to lie in bed as a kid listening to all the big dance bands in, in, in the, it was a, the Queen's Market was a dance hall in, in those days. All the top bands used to play there and she used to talk about being a, a kid in bed listening to all of these bands playing. But she turned me on to Frank Crummit. Now my love of, of uh, uh, English culture is, is well known of course. Um, and this is uh, a song or a poem by Frank Crummit called The Return of Abdul Abulbul Amir, who was a Turkish gentleman. And uh, he returns and collides with a Russian hussar. Now, um, hussars are members of the light cavalry. So here we go. Uh, the Return of Abdul Abulbul Amir. By the Sea of Zaragoza, I wandered one night. The moon, it was shining quite clear. For no reason at all, I heard somebody call for Abdul Abulbul Amir. Now, Abdul Abulbul, I knew to be dead. The story had spread near and far how he lost his life while plunging his knife into Ivan Skragvinsky Skava. While I pondered the moonbeams descended quite low, casting shadows suffusely, and then I discovered that I was standing close by the tombs of those two famous men. Then in the tomb's shadow there rose from the grave the form of a Russian hussar, and my skin nearly peeled as he stood there revealed. It was Ivan Skravinsky Skava. "'Twas he who was calling. I hardly dared breathe. My heart stopped, most stopped beating from fear. When out of the grave, in need of a shave, rose Abdul Abulbul Amir. "'Well, would speak with me, Ivan?' quoth Abdul. "'I would,' replied Ivan, quite clear. "'That quarrel we had, t'was all to the bad. Friend, Abdul Abulbul Amir.' I've lain here for ages with that on my mind and that's why I called you tonight while I'm in the same state quoth Abdul the Great t'was foolish for we two to fight oh friend thou art blameless cried Ivan in haste the fault lies in my hands alone but Abdul said nay t'was never that way the fault was no one's but mine own well, dost thou think I'm a coward, quoth Ivan Skavar? Step forth, and I'll slice off thine ear. Oh, son of a cat, you'll never do that, quoth Abdul Abulbul Amir. So once more they battled and fought as before. And the multitudes came from afar and lauded with cheers those bold buccaneers, this Turk and the Russian hussar. T'was just at that moment each sword found its mark, and I heard a blood-curdling scream. I opened my eyes, and to my surprise, I found it was only a dream. Abdullah Bulbul Amar, lovely Anne Robin, she's not with us anymore, but she's a star. She was a, she was a lovely, lovely lady. She was a very, very good photographer. Now, I'm going to try a John Prine song, uh, but... Um, I have a tendency to be on the little on the quiet side. I am desperately looking in, with Leslie's help, looking into solving this problem. But uh, we'll we'll have a go. It's a John Prine song, but I've adapted it. Um, to, to you mean it, you you folked it up? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, I've added some words in. I've changed uh, the American grandpa for Tide and for, <laughs> for those who don't know Tide is the Welsh word for grandfather uh, Tide and I've also turned 
um, his word for grandma to nine. And I've also identified nine's occupation as a throwess, which is teacher. And there are a couple of words like that thrown around uh, to make it because it's very close to my, my tide was a carpenter or a sire, uh, uh, as we would say. And the song is about a grandfather who is a carpenter. Tide wore a suit to dinner nearly every day. No particular reason, he just dressed that way. Brown necktie, matching coat, both his steel cap shoes. Built a closet on our back porch. Put a penny in a burnt out fuse. Tied was a sire. He built houses, stores and banks. He chain smoked capstan cigarettes and he hammered nails in planks. He was level on the level. Shaved even every door. He voted for the Labour Party. Though Churchill won the war, he used to sing me, Old oh, Black Joe, I'm coming, I'm coming. And he'd rock me on his knee, let me listen to the radio before we got TV. He'd drive to church on Sunday and take me with him too. Stained glass in some of the windows, hearing aids in every pew. Tide was a carpenter, he built houses, stores, and banks. He chain small caps and cigarettes and hammered nails in planks. He was level on the level. Shaved even every door. He voted for Eisenhower. Cause he won the war. <laughs> well, my nine was an Athrawis. She taught in Denby Green. Traded in her milking cow. Sing her sewing machine. She called her husband Maester, and she walked real tall with pride. Used to buy me American comic books after Grandpa died. Tide was a sire. He built houses, stores, and banks. Chain smoke, caps and cigarettes. He hammered nails in planks. He was level on the level. Shaved even every door. He voted for the Labour Party. Though Churchill won the war. He voted for the Labour Party. Don't judge you on the wall. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>
understand what exactly they did. You know, uh, absolutely incredible. We must have been a pain in the ass because we'd go on the building sites and we'd be mixing the sand up and we'd be putting chippings in the sand and everything. And we must have been a real nuisance, but he never once complained. And he'd take us every Saturday onto the building site and uh, we'd get a, a playing with sash cord and f messing up the putty and all this kind of stuff. And he just smiled all his way through it. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I never really knew either of my grandfathers. Uh, my dad's father, I think, was long dead before I was born. And my mother's father was actually, uh, it was Huey Williams. He was from Bala. And he came to Burnley after the First World War, presumably looking for work. And he was a... Um, I think it was a sort of a carpenter and joiner, really. Um, but uh, he spoke Welsh, but <laughs> not many Welsh speakers in Burnley. No, well, it, it, it's a problem. Um, I, I'm living through this at the moment. My daughter lives down south, and she's trying her best, but it, 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 it's an uphill, uphill struggle. And we are swamped with people who, who don't even make an effort. You know, they, they, um, there's lots of people in the village I live in who... Um, I've lived here for 30 odd years and they don't even know what Arav means on the road, you know. <laughs> there is a, 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 dis a disconnect. There, which, um, my kids didn't have any granddads either, um, w which makes it doubly important to be a granddad. I'm a professional tide, uh, a fast flowing tide, as, as the Rhys, uh, Al Alan <laughs> Rhys Jones um, uh, announces. Yeah. Yeah, my my granddad was apparently uh, well. Well, being from Bala is sort of pretty much uh, guaranteed to be a Welsh speaker in well, nineteen. You can tell, John, that there's obviously something acceptable about you. You know, we we we, we can sense this. We see. <laughs> but uh, he uh, he had a stroke, and I was only tiny at the time, and it used to puzzle me why my granddad used to sleep downstairs. Yeah. And apparently, after he'd had his stroke, uh, he couldn't speak English. But there was one bloke who, com who came to visit him who could speak Welsh, and he could yak her away in Welsh OK. Well, my daughter did, a, did psychology, and it's, it's, it's recognised. If you're multilingual, um, I mean, bilingual English Welsh, and you have a stroke, you have a 50% more chance of uh, keeping a language, because you've got two options. If you're multilingual, you have uh, as many chances as languages you've got because the neural pathways wire up differently. Um, and there's lots of people who, who go through that uh, experience. They um, ha have their misfortune and lose one language, but master uh, or revive the other. You know, it, 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 it's a recognized fact. Yeah. Well, I, I hope my two X will stand me in good stead then. <laughs> yes. Right, um, right, oh, an English song uh, about a uh, young lad who goes out, uh, has a little bit too much to drink and ends up taking the king's shilling and his girlfriend is not well pleased and uh, I'll see you in a few years, love, sort of thing. Uh, it changes perspective halfway through from the point of the bloke to the girl, so I know that many of you are very easily confused but that's uh, that's what happens and I've broken a nail so I can only play with two fingers so I'm having to adapt my style a bit tonight <laughs> crossed o'er the Mars I little thought of listening till the soldiers did me cross the company enticed me to drink their health all round and the bounty and the bounty gave 
give me five guineas and a crown. My head was filled with doing clothes. I didn't think. Cockade. Right, uh, what's next? Uh, ah, Ralph McDell song. Um, heard this many times before. Uh, one of my favourite songs about ethnic cleansing, probably in the Balkans, but could be anywhere really. Peppers and tomatoes. Like my father 
father did before me. His father did before him. His father did before him. Share what we have grown. Mr. David Heitch. Oh, we can see you as well, Dave. Lovely. Just about, yes, yes. It's not that my head's so big, I just can't sit far enough away from the camera. There we go. Um, evening, everyone. Um, I'm a cappella this evening. Hope that's all right. <clears throat> uh, an East Anglian song. Three jolly rogues of Lynn. Three jolly rogues of Lynn. A miller and the weaver and the little tailor, three jolly rogues of Lynn. Now the miller, he stole corn, and the weaver, he stole yarn. But the little tailor, he stole broadcloth, for to keep those three rogues warm. For to keep those three rogues warm. For to keep those three rogues warm. Yes, the little tailor, he stole broadcloth, for to keep those three rogues warm. 
Now the miller still drowned in his dam, and the weaver he hangs from his yarn. But the devil put his paw on the little sailor, and the broadcloth under his arm, with the broadcloth under his arm, with the broadcloth under his arm. Yes, the devil put his paw on the little sailor, with the broadcloth under his arm. Now the miller still drowned in his dam, and the weaver still hangs from his yarn. But the little sailor, he skips through hell with the broadcloth under his arm. Three jolly rogues of Lynn, three jolly rogues of Lynn, a miller and the weaver and the little sailor, three jolly rogues of Lynn. Three jolly rogues. Oh, I haven't heard that for years. Lovely little song. Well, you heard it again now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is a more recent one. <clears throat> now it's early in the morning factory whistle blows man rises from bed and puts on his clothes takes his lunch walks out in the morning light it's the work just the working it's the working life through the mansions of fear through the mansions of pain, I've seen my daddy walking through those gates in the rain. Factory takes his hearing, factory gives him life. It's the work, just the working, it's the work in life. At the end of the day, factory whistle cries. Men walk through these gates with death in their eyes. And you just better believe it, boy, somebody gonna get hurt tonight. It's the work, just the working, it's the working life. Now it's early in the morning, factory whistle blows. Man rises from bed and puts on his clothes. Takes his lunch, walks out in the morning light. It's the work, just the working, it's the working life. It's the work, just the working, it's the working life. Yeah, that's lovely. Lovely day. Nice to hear you're just a cappella as well. Excellent. Thank you. So, uh, right, well, that's, uh, phew, Christ, five to ten. It's halfway. <laughs> right, I'm desperate for a wee, but Mike's on next, so that's okay. He always goes out for one when I'm on. And let's look at my list. Uh, Stuart there, Stuart. Yeah, Stuart, I can't see Stuart. No, no, oh, there he is. Are you doing any more, Stuart? Are you done for the night? Are you just sat back relaxing? Finish, right, okay. So we've got Mike. And then, uh, anything from Davith and Bree? Yeah. Uh, no, no, we haven't got anything else prepared. So, um, right. uh, regard that as extra space for yourselves. <laughs> okay, so that's Mike, and then uh, John W. And right. then, I don't know if Les will say we're going for time. Leslie's got a poem. Um, which John will like, because it's about Bowmore. Ah. Uh, and then Ian's gone, so it's after Leslie. Gaffer, Nick, Gwyn, me. Oh, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen about the recording this week. Alan might get round to doing it on Sunday, perhaps, when he's uh, back home. I have no idea. I'll upload it. And he can do it when he gets around to it. <coughs> Les is going to be doing the vlog tomorrow. It will be different. That's <laughs> all I'm saying. It will be very different to what you're used to. So, uh, right, Mike, take Yo, it away. Yes. I'm, I'm going to exit stage right. Okay, look. Uh, this song is called uh, "Farewell to the Gold." It's got a, it's got a good chorus. It's um. And a Dick Jones song off uh, of Penguin Eggs. It's about the the little known 
the little known gold rush in, in New Zealand in the middle of the 1800s. Um, uh, it's a story of, a, of, of one miner who goes out there and uh, it's, it's a tragedy really, but um, farewell to the gold. <clears throat> Shot over river, your gold is waning. It's years since the color I've seen. It's no use just sitting and lady luck wait blaming. I'll pack up and make the break clean. Farewell to the gold that never I found. Goodbye to the nuggets that somewhere abound For it's only when dreaming That I see you gleaming Down in the dark deep underground It's nearly three years since I left my old mother for adventure and gold by the pound With Jimmy the prospector, yes he was another For the hills of Otago we were bound Farewell to the gold that never I found Goodbye to the nuggets that's somewhere abound For it's only when dreaming That I see you gleaming Down in the dark deep underground We work the Cardrona Dry Valley all over Old Jimmy Williams and me they were panning good dust at the winding shot over So we headed down there just to see Farewell to the gold that never I found Goodbye to the nuggets that somewhere abound For it's only when dreaming that I see you gleaming Down in the dark deep underground We sluiced and we cradled for day after day Barely making enough to get by Then a terrible flood swept poor Jimmy away during six stormy days in July Farewell to the gold that never I found Goodbye to the nuggets that somewhere abound For it's only when dreaming that I see you gleaming Down in the dark deep underground shot over river your gold is waning it's years since the color i've seen it's no use just sitting and lady luck blaming i'll pack up and make the break clean Farewell to the gold that never I found Goodbye to the nuggets that somewhere abound For it's only when dreaming that I see you gleaming Down in the dark deep underground for it's only when dreaming that I see you gleaming down in the dark deep underground. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, no, perfect. I had uh, some relations went out to. Uh, 
the gold gush out there. And I think my brother's still got some letters that they sent back. Uh, really? Which is quite, quite interesting. Uh, I think, think the fact that they could actually write is quite uh, something. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, well, oh, here we've got, we're keeping the man up because he's got an early start in the morning, but uh, is Carol there as well? That next to me, yes, indeed. Cheers. Does Carol want to do something after you? You want to do something after me? I can do, yes, if that's all right, all right. if you've got time. Well, clear up with a bucket and shovel after him. Just a quick one, quick advert. Broken nails, even if they're sort of too tall, two thirds of the way across. All the nail rescue. You paint your fingernail, dip it in the powder, give it a quick rub over with the um, sandpaper that they give you. And it's good for another week or two while the, the, the nail grows out. So there you go. Oh. What's it called again? Orly, O-R-L-Y, Nail Rescue. You get it on um, eBay. It's about a fiver. It's, you know. I'm just it's writing it down. Family. So I sort of, I don't know what happened. It just, it wasn't there. <laughs> I didn't feel it going. It was just not there. Not there, oh well. But th this is worth doing if you split a nail and you think, oh, I'm playing tonight or whatever. Mm. It, it's worth getting hold of. Right. Yeah, these, these people who use finger picks, uh, this, this is the time when you think, hmm, yeah. that'd be handy if I could just put my picks on. Yeah. But you can't, you can't swap between the two, really. You either play with one or the other, and if you start trying to play with picks on, you're knackered. Well, the thumb picks point in the wrong way for me because it comes out at the side of your thumb, and I'm used to playing with my thumbnail. So, and the finger picks just don't stay on. The only reason I started finger picking was I kept firing my plectrum either into the audience or into the sound hole of my guitar. <laughs> so, I thought, right, grow your fingernails and learn some finger picking. So, there we are. Anyway. Right, I'll turn myself off. Oh dear. Sings that 
it's so hard for me Can I choose my own destiny All the things that I want to see is so Please, I am not a free man. Others rule my destiny, but my will's never broken. I know someday I will be everything that I dreamed I'd be. Oh, when I live the life I please and I will be a free man I know someday I will be Everything that I dreamed I'd be Oh, when I live the life I please and I will be a free man Please, and I will be a free man. Woo! Wee-ha! <laughs> That's a song by the Levelers, by the way. <laughs> right, are you going to shift to your bum? I'm moving this way. She's moving that way. Hello, everyone. Are you all packed? Everything there? I'm I'm sorted. I've got things in various places, so I'm yeah, I'm getting there. Just well, you're running short you're running short of time, girl. <laughs> no, last thing minute things that have got to be done tomorrow. Well, don't give me a ring when you're on your way out. Sorry, John, what was that? Don't phone me up when you're on your way out if it's early. I don't want to know. It won't be early. <laughs> <laughs> We're not that early risers. We never do that. We never do that. Right. What are, you doing for... what? what are you doing for us tonight then, Carol? A poem called St Ives. It's not a very long one, so warning that I finish quite quickly. St Ives in the sunshine is a special place to be with the sand and the surf and the shimmering blue sea. Stretching my legs, wiggling my toes, splashing through the waves, exploring the coves. But St Ives in the rain refreshes differently. White surf, waves crashing, surging rough sea. Jumping over puddles, running through the rain. Sipping hot tea, watching the rivulets run down the window pane. I like St Ives all the year round. I've even been there when there's snow on the ground. It's a good place to chill, to relax and unwind, to renew your energies and bring peace to your mind. Thank you. Oh. All together. Oh. That was lovely, Carol. Right, well, I'm going to do a bit of bum shifting as well. Uh, I'll kick, kick my guitar out of the way because Leslie's here, so off I go. Hi. Right. I'm going to read a poem. Um, this poem is by Robin Lang. It's a it's a whiskey poem, and I think mm. the reason it sort of sprang to mind really is the fact that um, on a Friday night, John and I have taken to um, taken to the drink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and after this is finished, we normally uh, 
clear up the living room um, and put a little dram in a glass and go out and light some candles and drink some whiskey. And it just settles us down for the night. So um, anyway, this, this poem's called Smokey the Cat. Smokey the Cat came from nowhere, just whispered in under some door, sniffed quietly around and knew that she'd found the best place to stay in Bowmore. She'd arrived at Bowmore Distillery, where the finest malt whiskey is made. There was no welcome mat for Smokey the Cat, but she liked the place, so she stayed. They say that cats have more than one life, with reincarnation in that. And whether it's true or that cat deja vu, Smokey's a born-again cat. There's something about her that takes you back to the lords of the isles, when the cats of Finn Lagan would go scallywagging for miles and miles and miles. It's the way she melts into the shadows, or suddenly creeps up on folk. She'll always find you, slinking behind you, the cat who was named after Smoke. She sits on the sill of the maltings, on days when the weather is nice, and while one eye sleeps, the other one keeps a lookout for small birds and mice. Small birds and mice eat the barley, so Smokey confronts them four square, but she pulls in her claws and quietly ignores the angels who come for their share. Felines don't care for whiskey, everyone understands that, but that peaty odour beneath the pagoda owes something to Smokey the Cat. On Isla, people made whiskey long before it was chic. The cat from Bowmore is nothing more than the ghost of the island's peat reek. That's it, thank you. Yes. Oh, nice sure that was... drama as well, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are uh, we're on the McAllen at the moment. Uh, but Leslie went in Morrison's. Those of you who were here last week, Phil from up in Northumberland was complaining about the price of Dura in Tesco, but it's on offer in Morrison's for twenty two quid, down from about thirty eight. So it just shows in the markup that they make on the bloody stuff, doesn't it? Right. Uh, gaffer. Can you unmute yourself, young Mr. Springer? Yes, there I we are. Unmuted. Ah. Yes, I, I went down to, to Cardiff, and it'll break the hearts of, of Digwin and David to think that uh, I only heard two people speaking Welsh all the time I was down there. I went down for a weekend, and there were only two people I heard speaking Welsh, and they weren't even speaking to each other. Um, one of them was uh, lovesick or homesick or both, North Walian speaking to his girlfriend on his mobile phone, and the other was the station announcer for the train back to Tandidna. <laughs> <laughs> The former was me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is nothing. Well, I, this isn't Welsh. This isn't at all Welsh. This is probably more from, uh, I don't know, Greece or Turkey or something like that. It's, it's, it's definitely very foreign. Uh, but it, it shares with my, my previous Welsh masterpiece about uh, the, the plate of chips. Um, a degree of unhealthy eating, although this time it's not so much carbohydrates as uh, as saturated fat but it, it 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 has a lesson it has a moral and uh, just as my health song about snuff did here we go if you want inside the knickers of a million dollar figure you find folks rather bigger in kebab shops if you want inside the knickers of a million dollar figure you'll find folk rather bigger in kebab shops if you want inside the knickers of a million dollar figure, you'll find folk rather bigger in kebab shops. If you want inside the knickers of a million dollar figure, they all wear bigger knickers in kebab shops. But if you want a hug 
from a big fat slug. Ten to one, she stuffs her mug in her kebab shop. If you want a hug from a big fat slug, ten to one, she stuffs her mug in her kebab shop. If you want a hug from a big fat slug, ten to one, she stuffs her mug in her kebab shop. If you want a hug from a big fat slug, they're all mug stuffing slugs in a kebab shop. But if you want a kiss and cuddle, with a famous supermodel. You'll find models never toddle in kebab shops. If you want to kiss and cuddle with a famous supermodel, you'll find models never toddle in kebab shops. If you want to kiss and cuddle with an upcoming model, you'll find models never toddle in kebab shops. If you want to kiss and cuddle with a famous supermodel, You'll find sod old models toddle in kebab shops. But if you want a night of passion with a discus chucking Russian, you could do worse than rushing a kebab shop. If you want a night of passion with a discus chucking Russian, you could do worse than rushing a kebab shop. If you want a night of passion with a discus chucking Russian, you could do worse than rushing a kebab shop. If you want a night of passion with a discus chucking Russian, there's a lot of Russians rushing in kebab shops. If you're eyeing up that sotty and hope you find a hottie, you'll find them much more grotty in kebab shops. If you're eyeing up that sotty and hope you find a hottie, you'll find them much more grotty in kebab shops. If you're eyeing up that sotty and hope you find a hottie, You'll find them much more grotty in kebab shops. If you're eyeing up the totty in the hope you find a hottie, there's a lot of grotty totty in kebab shops. But if you want a snog with a big fat airy dog, you'll find plenty of them clogging up kebab shops. If you want a snog with a big fat airy dog, you'll find plenty of them clogging up kebab shops. Oh, if you want a snog with a big fat airy dog, you'll find plenty of them clogging up kebab shops. If you want to have a snog with a big fat airy dog, they're all doggedly out clogging up kebab shops. Now, if you like them tall and trim, or you like them small and slim, then it's no use popping in to a kebab shop. If you like them tall and trim, or you like them small and slim, and it's no use popping in to a kebab shop. If you like them tall and trim, or you like them small and slim, then it's no use popping in to a kebab shop. If you like them tall and trim, or you like them small and slim, you'll find them bigger inside a kebab shop. But if you fancy kipping with an obstacle to shipping, all you gotta do is nip in a kebab shop. If you fancy kipping with an obstacle to shipping, all you gotta do is nip in a kebab shop. If you fancy kipping with an obstacle to shipping, all you gotta do is nip in a kebab shop. If you fancy kipping with an obstacle to shipping, they're forever nipping in and out. Kebab shops. <laughs> there we go. Other fast food outlets are available. <laughs> yeah. Right, thank you, Gaffer. <laughs> thank right, you, John. moving from the Great Orm to Upper Colwyn Bay. We haven't seen any of your pets tonight, Nick. Where's little Tatus been? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's just here. He's just a bit shy tonight, I think. Has he shat on the carpet or something? No, no, no. No, he's been a good boy. This is a bothy ballad called uh, Band of Shears. New summer days and heather bells come reeking o'er yon Heeland hills. There's yellow corn in yonder fields, the autumn brings the shearing. Oh, bonny lassie, will you gang and shear with me the hill belong? 
Love will cheer us as we gang to join your band of shearers. If the thistle it be strong and if it jags your milk white hand, it's we mock cow cut it down when we join your band of shearers. Oh, bonny lassie, will you gang and shear with me the hill de long? Love will cheer us as we gang to join young band of shearers. If the weather it be hot, I'll cast my waistcoat and my coat and shear with you among the lot when we join young band of shearers. Oh, bonnie lassie, will you gang and shear with me the hill de long? And love will cheer us as we gang to join young band of shearers. If the weather it be dry, they'll say there's love between you and I. We'll slyly pass each other by when we join your band of shearers. Oh, bonnie lassie, will you gang and shear with me the hill de long? And love will cheer us as we gang to join your band of shearers. When the harvest is all done, we'll have some rant and roam and fun. We'll have some rant and rove and fun, forget the toils of the shearing. Oh, bonnie lassie, will you gang and shear with me the hill day long? And love will cheer us as we gang to join your band of shearers. Oh, bonnie lassie, will you gang and shear with me the hill day long? And love will cheer us as we gang to join your band of shearers. And love will cheer us as we gang to join your band of shearers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, I remember that from your Fox Firkin days. Ah, uh, indeed. And, and I wasn't on my own. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't used to sing it then, though, didn't Alan used to sing it? No, no, that was one of mine. Oh, that's why you remember it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for those of you uh, who didn't know, Fox Firkin were, some years ago, Will's premiere. <laughs> folk group <laughs> don't tell none, rum none bum of, and whatever <laughs> yeah none of this sort of uh, bees knees rum bum a concertina crap yes they're they were the dogs weren't they right Gwyn oh I've got a thumbs up he's still awake there we go and yeah. he's pressed his little button oh and it's all turned blue there we go and, uh, back into the into the silent twilight zone. Here we go. Um, song called "The Late John Garfield's Blues." <laughs> Black faces pressed against the glass, where rain has pressed its way. Windblown scarves and top-down cars all share one western trait. Tears that have veined the tears veined cheeks from winos to dimes to Jews probably don't know they give me the late John Garfield's blues. Midnight fell on Franklin Street, the lamp bulbs all were broke. The life of me I couldn't see heard a brand new joke. Two men were standing on a bridge, one jumped and screamed, You lose, just left the yard one holding. The late John Garfield's blues Old man sleeps with his conscience at night Young kid sleeps with his dreams The mentally ill sit perfectly still And live their life in between I'm going away, last resort in a week or two real soon Where fish don't bite But once a night Cold light of the moon The 
horses scream the nightmares dreams and dead men all wear shoes and everybody's dancing those late John Garfield's blues and everybody's dancing those late John Garfield Struggling to reach my mute button there. <laughs> right, okay, it's uh, oh, got three minutes. Not that we're actually desperate for time, but uh, might as well finish now. So I'll just do one to round off the night, um, an end of night song. Um. <laughs> spend it in good company and of all the harm that ever I've done alas it was to none but me and all I've done for want of wit to memory now I can't recall so fill to me Parting glass, good night and joy be with you all. And of all the friends that ever I had, they are sorry at my going away. And of all the sweethearts that ever I had. Wish me one more day to stay But since it falls unto my lot That I should rise and you should not I'll softly rise and gently call Good night and joy be with you If I had money enough to spend and leisure time to sit a while, there is a fair maid in this town who sorely has my heart beguiled. The rosy cheeks and ruby lips, I own she has my heart beguiled. and joy be with you all but since it falls unto that I should rise and you should not I'll softly rise and gently call Good night and joy be with you all Right, well, that's another Friday night wrapped up We'll be off for a dram out in the rain I think it's raining again and uh, next week we should have Alan back and yep. thanks to my assistant uh, Debbie McGee here for helping me with the muting and unmuting and all the stuff so thanks everyone for coming uh, Glenis will be getting a hard time as well because she's not been here all night I can only assume uh -huh. she's with the uh, 
the dogging and the swinging crowd. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? Right. Okay. Good night, and we will see you all hopefully next week. And Gwyn might have his uh, little box working. Jochenwald, no stop. And Nick Jill, Nat Jackson might be able to stop yawning when I'm doing a song. <laughs>